It's just past 11 o'clock on a Friday, and that means it's time to hear from our movie guy. Matt Evans is our resident movie guy, and he is joining us on the phone to fill us in on all of the latest news and tell us a little bit about what's new in theaters this weekend. So good morning, Matt. Good morning. Whenever I go into that intro, I always want to do like the Wayne's World intro. It's 10 o'clock in Aurora, Illinois, and it's time to party. Just roll with it one of these days. <laughs> one of these days I will. Hey, thanks for joining just, just us. Do it. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Um, a little while ago, uh, Jake was here in the studio with us. We were talking uh, basketball since it's Final Four weekend, and we uh, we kind of got into a little bit about basketball movies. Um, is there any basketball movies that stand out when you think about um, the round ball involved in uh, film? Um. I don't know. Does this count as a basketball movie, Basketball Diaries, with Leonardo DiCaprio? Uh, yeah, it does. I, I guess. Think. I mean, it's it's not really focused on the basketball itself, but that is one of my favorite movies. I, I think it's fantastic. And, uh, you know, love and basketball, obviously. You can't can't mention basketball movies without love and basketball. Right. Uh, we brought up Hoosiers, uh, Blue Chips, with Shaquille O'Neal, and oh, the one I was... I forgot all about Blue Chips even existing. We thought of the, the there was one I was trying to think of, but I couldn't while we were on the air. Glory Road is uh, about Don Haskins and uh, UTEP basketball. True story. Uh, that's a great one too. And uh, what I, I want to say the Pete Marinovich story. I don't know, remember if that was the actual name of it, but I remember watching that one when I was a Pete Marinovich story when I was a kid, and that was another really good basketball theme movie. Yeah, that's a it was like a TV movie from the yeah. seventies or early eighties. Yeah. Yeah, about the player that uh, died on the court, even. Right, Pistol Pete Maravich. Some good ones out there for anybody that uh, wants to do a little themed weekend with uh, Final Four here. But Matt's going to tell us about some of the movies that are opening in theaters this weekend, but I know you've got lots of movie news to tell us about, too. Well, let's start off with the big one. The King of Wakanda has finally been dethroned. Uh, Black Panther is no longer the number one movie in the country uh, after six massive weeks. Hmm. Uh, Pacific Rim Uprising has taken over the top spot. Wow. You climb, you climb to the top of the mountain, and you stay there for a good amount of time, and then you get knocked off by robots. <laughs> right. Well, you know, it's, you got a superhero being beaten by a giant fighting robot, so, you know, that's the world we're in now. That's right. It's what comic books are made of. So, right. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm fine with it. A lot of people were, were not surprised that Black Panther was, Black Panther was such a hit, um, but the legs on it really kind of caught everybody off guard. Six weeks at number one is no small feat, and it actually, we talked about last week how it was on the cusp. It actually has officially topped... Uh, Avengers as the highest grossing comic book movie domestically of all time. Wow. So, you know, huge shout out to the guys behind that movie. They did a fantastic job. Well, you've got those two big budget blockbusters at one and two at the box office. And then look who's at number three. I can only imagine a movie that costs seven million dollars to make, Matt. And it's it's I think it's top 40 million at the box office now. Right, which is what we talked about last week. You know, um, movies with a message over the past few years have a have gotten better in quality, and so you're starting to see movies that, that aren't just message-driven, they're also story-driven, and they're, they're really well done, and, and it shows, you know, we're, we're seeing the result of, of a good movie like that, plus, you know, Mercy Me, I can only imagine that is, uh, it was a song that transcended genres, it wasn't just a hit in the Christian music, it kind of bled over to the mainstream, and mm-hmm. so there's a lot of fans of that message in that band, and so it really helps them, you know, but it, it still is, is absolutely shocking. It is. What else is making news this week? Well, we got some bad news if you're a fan of the X-Men and the Fox-branded comic book movies. Um, Fox has announced that they're going to push back Dark Phoenix and New Mutants. Uh, So New Mutants is now delayed for the second time. Uh, Dark Phoenix is going to be pushed from November of this year to February of next year. And New Mutants gets pushed back all the way to August of next year. Hmm. So that's a little worrisome. Uh, but, but there's a couple things we have to consider when you're looking at these, these pushbacks. We do know that they were going to be doing some reshoots. Um, we also know that Dark Phoenix stars Sophie Turner and New Mutant stars Maisie Williams, both you know, fans, or not fans, excuse me, stars of the huge hit Game of Thrones, which is currently filming its final season. Mm-hmm. Um, so if we want to look at it at face value, the delays are so long because the reshoots they can't do right now. They're, they've got their two main actors are busy doing you know, another major project. Well, that's um, that's bad news for people who were ready for those films to come out. I have to wait a little bit longer, but um, we can dive into the conspiracy theories a little bit because I have I okay. have some more worrisome things to 
report if you are excited to see Dark Phoenix and New Mutant. Do we need to put on our tinfoil hats or anything? We should definitely pull out our tinfoil hats for this one. But uh, if you, if it does come to pass, learn, remember that you heard it here first. Okay. Okay, sure. so Marvel Entertainment, uh, they have decided that they, uh, they have announced that in July they're killing off their comic book characters, the Inhumans, in a series of comic books. Mm-hmm. And they just announced yesterday that they're bringing back the Fantastic Four, which hasn't had a regular comic book since... Uh, 2009, I believe. So it's been a while. Mm -hmm. Um, Why is this significant to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Because the X-Men and Fantastic Four are movie rights are owned by Fox. Mm -hmm. Uh, So when when Fox bought the had the movie rights and were pushing it, Marvel essentially killed off the X-Men and closed down shop on the Fantastic Four because they didn't want to push a product uh, in the movies that they weren't making any money off of. Right. So now we have Dark Phoenix delayed, we have New Mutants delayed, we have Disney in, in the midst of buying Fox, and we have two comic books that were, one that was meant to replace the X-Men, and one that was just kind of shoved aside to not have to promote movies that weren't in them, are now coming back. Mm-hmm. Um, the tinfoil hat side of me says that we may never see Dark Phoenix and New Mutants. They may be shelved indefinitely as the Disney Fox deal goes forward. Wow. Okay. We'll uh, we'll we'll keep this in the database, and then we'll see uh, how that if that turned out to be uh, proven correct. Yeah. Well, I definitely don't want to see it. I think that uh, New uh, Excuse me, Dark uh, Dark Phoenix has the potential to be one of the better movies. It's based off one of the best stories in the comic books. Mm-hmm. And Sophie Turner did, has done a great job playing that character in the movies. I would be really disappointed to not see either one of those movies, but I wouldn't be surprised. Talking to our movie guy, Matt Evans. We're going to get to some of the uh, new movies in theaters uh, this uh, Easter holiday weekend. But before we do that, anything else making news this week? One more little tidbit of superhero movie news. Uh, Tom Hardy's movie Venom is coming out this year. Uh, rumors have been flying lately that the title character Venom doesn't even make a full appearance until the last five minutes of the movie. Wow. Um, if that's the case, uh, there's going to be so many disappointed fans out there. Now, Tom Hardy hasn't really uh, said one way or another, but he has hinted on his Instagram that the rumors around it may not be true. Uh, so we're just, fingers crossed that this is just a rumor and that we're going to get some more of the title character in the movie. Um, the reports are that they're playing this more like a horror movie, so it would make sense to not have a big reveal towards the end because that's kind of the famous horror movie trope. You don't show the monster till the last quarter of the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but that doesn't make sense for a superhu- uh, superhero movie, and it certainly doesn't make sense for a character that as popular as Venom. So hoping this rumor turns out to be false, but uh, we have a few more months before we'll find out on that one. Okay, interesting. What do we got uh, new in theaters this week? Uh, let's see, Nostalgia-Filled Fever Dream, Ready Player One by Steven Spielberg is out, came out last night. Uh, and it's another great movie. It's a uh, Rotten Tomatoes score sitting at 78% right now. Um, it's based on a great book. Uh, if you haven't read it, I'd definitely check it out. Written by Ernest Cline. Adapted for film by Ernest Cline as well. So rare, rare situation where the writer of the book actually helped make the movie. Uh, but there's so many Easter eggs and, and little tips and nods and you know, things that in this movie that you're, you're going to have to watch it more than once just to absorb everything. And this is a uh, this is the Steven Spielberg's latest movie. Absolutely, too. Steven Spielberg at, at like peak Steven Spielberg. If you remember all the uh, you know his famous movies, you know grew up watching E. T. and Jurassic Park. This is another movie in that same line. Like this is a Steven Spielberg movie. You watch it without even hearing his name, and you could tell. Right, and it's one of those films. Uh, you and I were talking off air. It's one of those that you just you got to see it on a big screen and be able to kind of absorb everything that's in it because it looks like there's a lot going on in this film right i mean the story itself is so packed it, it, it's set in a dystopian future in a, a massive virtual reality world i um, without getting too much into the story because i really want you to see the movie and i really want you guys to, to read the book um but it's set in this kind of dystopian future where everybody kind of escapes into this virtual reality world and so it takes little cues and hints from pop culture from the last you know 30 40 years so there's Little nods to Star Wars and little nods to Star Trek and Mario Brothers and, mm-hmm. and video games and movies and so it's literally going to be you know your your childhood my childhood wrapped up into one movie and so we're going to be highlighting little bits be like oh look at that look at that look at that I like I was saying earlier I'm probably not even going to absorb the story the first time I watch it because I'm going to be looking out for all those little Easter eggs exactly um, there's we were talking about uh, these uh, movies with a message uh, Matt there's another one of those that's uh, premiering this weekend. Yeah, God's Not Dead, A Light in the Darkness uh, came out this week. And it's funny, we were talking about movies with the message getting better in quality. Uh, well, I hate to report that God's Not Dead bucks that trend rather spectacularly. <laughs> okay. 
the God's Not Dead movies have always been, um, it, without getting too too insulting in them, they seem more like a, a like a Hallmark movie or a TV movie in as far as quality goes. Mm-hmm. And that's not to say that they're not worth watching. Right. Uh, it's just that they don't really stand up to the the big blockbuster f- flicks that are coming out. Um, the message is great. The, you, you can't beat the message, honestly. You, uh, movies with the message are great, and it's going to have a, you know, a, a certain amount of people are going to watch it no matter what, mm-hmm. and it, it is the movie for you. It's got 50% fan rating on Rotten Tomato, but only 20% on critics. So it's another one of those movies that if this is the kind of movie you enjoy, you're absolutely going to enjoy it. If if this is not your regular type of movie, you're probably just going to want to skip it. Right. It uh, is it's, it's definitely has its uh, its own audience and, and will probably um, appeal to, to to that audience. Um, there's a new Tyler Perry movie also to round out the the new movies in theaters this weekend. Yeah, Acrimony is out this weekend, and for once, it doesn't have Medea in it, so that's interesting. <laughs> okay, so no. It's Medea. actually a, a drama movie, yeah. so it's um, you know. A, a, a different take on, I mean, Tyler Perry's known for drama and comedy, but he's obviously got more famous for his media characters and his humorous uh, TV shows. Uh, but he does have some chops when it comes to drama, and it looks like this one's going to be another one of his decent movies. Um, basically, it's the story of a, a scorned wife that, uh, you know, is tired of, of, you know, supporting her devious husband and uh, decides that she's going to get revenge. And that's good news for uh, fans of Medea because usually uh, Tyler Perry he does if, right after he does a serious movie, then he goes back to the you know the 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 golden the golden goose of uh, right. Of and there is a new Medea movie slated to come out this year, so we we do have another Medea coming out. Um, I'm trying to I didn't prepare well enough. I'm trying to pull up a release date on it, but uh, yeah, towards the end of this year there is a Medea movie coming out. So yeah, right on schedule. He's got the, his serious drama movie Acrimony, which looks pretty good. And then we'll get a you know slapstick style Medea movie. Okay, well there's some uh, new films out this weekend, and of course you still got uh, the Black Panther movie, uh, Pacific Rim, and uh, the, just for this you know Easter holiday, if uh, folks who haven't seen uh, the Apostle Paul movie, that one's also still in theaters. Right, absolutely pertinent uh, for for this kind of holiday too. So yeah, definitely check that one out. Uh, that is again one of those those movies with a message that as as really good quality. Um, so if you're looking for you know a faith based movie this week, pick uh, you know pick uh, I can only imagine or Apostle Paul, and uh, wait for uh, wait for God's Not Dead to come out on DVD. Okay, anything else before we have to wrap up, Matt? No, just get out and check out a lot of movies. There's tons of movies out this week, tons of movies in theaters, and we're getting to the point in the year where more and more of the blockbusters are going to be coming out. So if you're you know, trying to catch up to all the big movies this year, you're running out of time before it gets completely overwhelming. So get out there this week, check out a couple of the movies. we got a major big ones starting in just another week or so. So it's going to be a good year. All right, Matt, thanks for joining us uh, today. We'll talk to you uh, next Friday. Uh, actually, next week we're going to talk to you on Thursday, right? Next Thursday, going out a little early. Yeah, next Thursday. So have a happy Easter and a great weekend. Yeah, happy Easter to you, too. All right, talk to you next week. All right, bye-bye.